Hey, we're having Chinese food today, Ed. Good. Which leads us into the next wine. No, I'm kidding. Hey, it's March 2011 Vintner Series. 12. 12. God, see. March No wonder these wines taste as old. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I think it's the people tasting them myself, but that's another story. So here we are, and uh, I got to go to Ed's house yesterday, if you hadn't heard that on the thing, Foss, and I hadn't been there since I was nine. And by the way, his living room is one giant stereo speaker. I think, you know, I that's think, what I, I didn't think, get to hear. I think you're exaggerating. Why didn't you turn it off? Well, you me? should have. I mean, you know, well, you had to go. You had things to do, people well, to go. I'm moving and shaking, you know. Yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. 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 But what's the, what is the, uh, what speakers were those? Uh, I, well, I upgraded from the DQ10s to the DQ20s, Dahlquist, which is no longer in business. Oh, yeah, Dahlquist. Out of New York. And uh, so if I have to replace them, I've already replaced the woofers once. If I have to replace them again and get another speaker, I'll get banging. Where do you find? Uh, where, where, you get, where do you find drivers for those kind of things? They're 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 easy to find. The, the thing about a speaker is not the, the speakers themselves. Well, how much but do you the, play it? Do you have to replace the woofer? Oh God, my, I have a subwoofer. <laughs> I, I, it started to sound bad, and I took the grill off. It, it had literally disintegrated oh, around the oh, entire there's, speaker. There was nothing there. It was too many years. <laughs> so this is the San Clemente Carmen Air. From obviously San Clemente, but not the San Clemente that you're uh, familiar no, not with. Not from the South, uh, South yeah. Orange County. Yeah, you know, this is uh, mm, in the Mile Valley of Chile. Carmen Air used to be known as Merlot. Basically. And yeah. um, they found out it's really not Merlot. They were calling it Merlot, but it's not Merlot. But this is the grape that they had in Bordeaux. And then it became now popular. And I love how Argentina does this. You know, they grab well, these grapes. It's chili, but it's close to Chilean. I mean, uh, the same, but the Malbec story. The Malbec in Argentina. Argentina is the same thing. You know, they yeah. started in France somewhere. And I've read that Malbec actually started north of Burgundy, not really even in Bordeaux. Right. But um, you know, here's another case, case of it that it was originally used in Bordeaux at some point. Right. Well, they thought it was Merlot. And, and then somebody looked under its dress and went, oh my God, you're not Merlot. You're something else. So they shipped it off to Chile, and they did a better job of it in Chile than they do in France, just like they do an unbelievable job with Malbec in Argentina versus Cahors in France, oh, which is God. absolutely some of the worst wines I've ever tasted in my life. So they're very just, acidic. Now this, is, this one's got tons of fruit, ooh, yeah. good acid, great nose, and it doesn't have that vegetal character some carbonators come with this. Which, which well, because it's grown in a warm area, and so they, they're able to, to get it ripe enough. And this is a terrific bottle of wine. I mean, um, $17.99 on the shelf. $12.99 is the reorder price. And that's a, this is a killer bottle of I wine. Just, I want to keep drinking it. But we have one more podcast to do, so I can't. And then we have Chinese food. This is this not is 94 for me. I'm doing 94, too. All right. And the white wine is one of my personal favorites, the Take One Viognier, which is from Mendocino. And um, because it's a cooler climate and it doesn't ripen as crazily as it does in warmer climates, it doesn't have that almost effusive, you know, you know what? Uh, uh, tropical component. It's, uh, this one's more than yesterday. Well, it's there. But I mean, it's not that obnoxious, overly done. Right, right. right. And you know, so, and the problem with that is when you get these, some Viennese that just blow your nose away, and then you taste them, they're dry, and they, they finish mm -hmm. that acidic, Ooh. You, you get confused. But this one... Ooh, good boy, palette. the mint palette on that. It's got that, it's got that kind of white nectarine mm -hmm. sort of component in the, in the center of your mouth. That's the hardest uh, place to get flavor out of a wine. Because that means it's just got beginning, middle, finish, and it's perfectly focused, and it's just amazing. We well, have less taste buds in the middle of your palate. That's right. not one of the sensitive areas. However, when we've discussed this before, which is uh, sweet, salty, uh, or sour, and salt in the back of your mm -hmm. tongue, right? Then I posted that on Facebook, and I got all these, it, oh, it's disproven, it's not like that anymore, you know? But when you search it on the web, you see just all these graphic pictures of tongues. It's know? the same thing. It's exactly so I don't know which one's right. We are. We're right and they're wrong. They're wrong. Okay. End of story. Right. End of story. All right. So this take one is, uh, what I like about it is the balance of it. It's not, the nose isn't overbalanced and there's good acid, there's good fruit. And this is going to develop actually. Oh, without question. It's a 2010. I mean, it's got another couple of years to go easily and it'll just kind of, you know, all the flavors that you taste that are like in suspension will coalesce and come together and, and, and turn into a beautiful whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. Eighteen ninety nine regular, eleven ninety nine. God, this is a wonderful wine to have with shellfish. You know, with lobsters. Cool the finish has got so much going on. Ooh, unbelievable! Yeah, I'm doing a ninety five on that. I All think right. it's spectacular. But really, I just hit, that finish just hit me. 
as really having some layers mm -hmm. in it. You know, sometimes you just finish and die, and that's it, right? Yeah, but we don't feature those wines, Paul, in case this. you hadn't noticed. Look at this gorgeous label. Label? Yes. Look at that. Isn't that mm -hmm. fancy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some, too, or is this just yours? <laughs> Sorry. Do you remember? Sometimes you wonder what people are thinking when they design this thing. You remember a couple of years ago when you couldn't touch a Merlot for less than like $40? Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's like they were so nuts. And now, of course, people are, the bloom is kind of off the rose. So now we're getting, like last month, Stonegate. Man, that was great. Oh, God, this was is, that this good? Is, this I, is Central Coast 2008. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And I, and I suppose that, you know, with this bland packaging, you know, that's how we're able to get it. I mean, this is like mm. unbelievable. Wow. There's a lot of things going on in there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like it's all Merlot. I'm getting a little Cab Franc and mm -hmm. uh, maybe even some Petite Verdot. It's got this sort of spicy side, you know. It blew me away when I tasted it. And I kept looking at it going, okay, if that's what you're saying. I can afford to buy it and put it in that there. It's $17.99 in the front. I think it's even worth more than that. Nine ninety nine on, on a reorder. reorder. That's a hell of a reorder price. That's like a that's like a classic series price now. Mm. You know. Wow, that's that's an amazing wine. Seems I'm doing like a ninety four on that too. I will. I'll join on that. Thank you. So we don't have any two arguments. Mm. I don't want to argue with you. I hope so. Now, one of my favorite wines ever. I love this stuff. Cote de Gascony. Yeah, that's a good. It's just one. these wines are so good. They just. They just have this kind of piquant fruit, you know, that's like mm. guava and I don't know. But this is from your friend Merrick. I know, my buddy, yes. I w haven't talked to him in a year or so, but... Um, well, he said he was trying to, you know, make up with you. Good for him. Uh, this is Columbard, French Columbard. You taste it in California, and it tastes like water, okay? Absolute water. And, and they, they, when they grow it here in Gascony, and they mix it with another household word, at least in my household, grow men sang. Unbelievable. Grow who? Yeah, grow men sang. That sounds like it should be in a movie. <laughs> Not that kind of movie. Yeah, the artist. It was in the artist. I so think. this... Uh, <laughs> uh, mm. I tasted this flipped over. I love the acidity and the gripping, the gripping tannins, but... Um, we have another one coming, actually. This is the second Columbard now that I have coming. And, and Columbard reminds me of stock in the wine shop in PV. Mm -hmm. it's French Columbard. Right. Right? From Gallo. Mm hmm. Right? That was like. It was a nice, simple Fresno, wine. You know, yeah, Modesto. Right? That kind of stuff. But this is the a nose one. on this, it's got this orange peel Love thing, it. you know? Yeah, I get and that. this peel. citrusy edge and all kinds of interesting very very exotic fruit mm. and you know for 17.99 and 10.99 in the reorder price god i i, I could drink this all the time i really this, this would this is where where really we hope that people look at wines other than chardonnay or and even sauvignon blanc yeah. and say wow this is really fun to taste this is kind of why you pour it apart and they'll go hmm the wine like, hmm what i know because it's so unique I'm doing a 96 on this. I adore it. I absolutely adore this wine. Don't leave home without it. for me. That is the Vintner Series for March 2012. 2012. Well, that's a great lineup. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Ed. My pleasure. Okay.